Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today I'm going to show you how to add the iNav Flight Lua telemetry script to your TX16S. Before I start talking about the how-to, I just want to describe a little bit of the why. When you look at something like this and you're flying FPV, you say, why do you need this information on your radio? And for me, one of the primary answers is that when you're flying, if there's a chance you lose your video, this can be a very beneficial tool because this information comes to your radio over your control signal, not your video signal. So if something goes wrong with your VTX or your camera or something happens on the circuitry that causes a problem with video transmission, you can get access to what the aircraft is doing over the control signal. So this operates from telemetry. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen. One more thing we have to cover before we get into this how-to is that you have to have working telemetry. In my case, I'm using the Crossfire module, so I'm going to hit Model, and I'll go back one page and show you my telemetry screen. When I did the video on how to bind and flash firmware on the Crossfire receiver, I showed the last step was adding telemetry. So as you can see on my radio, I have working telemetry. You have to have this working before you go any further. If you don't have working telemetry, you may as well stop because you'll be nothing but frustrated. And I can see I've got working telemetry because when I put my hands on my flight computer and move it, I can see roll, pitch, and yaw. So I know that's coming from the flight computer. So once you have that set up and going for sure, then you can move on to the script part. And the script part's actually really easy. So we'll take a look at the computer now, and I'll put these links in the description so you don't have to worry about trapping them here. But you'll go to the link in the description and download the latest version as of this video is 1.7.2, and there's a link right at the top that says Lua Telemetry. We'll grab that, download it, and you can see I've downloaded this a couple of times. Once you have it downloaded, extract it. And while that's going on, let's connect the radio to the computer using the USB cable. So on the TX16S, that data port is up top. You can see I've been prompted for joystick or USB storage. I'll add USB storage as my option. And there we go. I've got a mount in my computer, and that'll open up over here on the, on the computer. The next thing I'll do is highlight the SD card drive. In my case, it's the D drive. So I'm just going to highlight that. And now you can see I've got the standard directory structure on the right, firmware, images, logs, and so on. And on the left, this is the archive that I just unpacked from the Lua telemetry download. There are two folders within the Lua telemetry archive, scripts and widgets. All you have to do is highlight those and drag them onto your SD card. In my case, I've already done this, so I anticipate I'll get a lot of errors saying, hey, we already did this, what do you want to do? You shouldn't have the same problem if you've never installed this. But I'm going to go ahead and drop these on my SD card, let it rip, and the copy's going to start, and it should complain. Yeah, I'm going to hit skip because I don't want to overwrite my settings file. But if, if you do get this error and you've never done this before, just hit replace. Okay, with that done, you've now installed the script. The next step is actually really easy, and I'll show you how to do that. We're going to go back over to the radio. We can disconnect our USB cable. And then on the radio, one thing you can do right away to figure out if you've got this right is hit your system button and then scroll over to your SD card with a page right, go down to scripts, and then under telemetry, you should see iNav Lua. If you long press that and hit execute, and you have your telemetry from your radio, this is the screen you should be greeted with. And one thing you can do to test right away is just grab your flight controller and move it. And you see how the artificial horizon is moving? That means I've got a working telemetry script right there. That's working. Okay, now let me show you how to set this up for use on the radio when you're flying. I'm going to back out of this script by hitting return. And you notice I'm back in the script. The reason is because I've set this up as a telemetry page on the model home screen. And I can navigate off of that by pressing page right, and I can navigate back by pressing page right again. So let me show you how to set this up. You hit the telemetry button from the home screen on the bottom, just press that, and then click page right until you get to the plus icon, and then press your jog dial. On this screen, turn off top bar, and turn off sliders and trim. The reason you need that is because the widget needs the entire screen. It can't contend with other painted objects on the screen. It needs the entire screen. So you have to turn everything off. Next, you'll hit Setup Widgets, 
and you'll be greeted with this big blank screen. Press the enter button and as you scroll to the right, you'll get an option that says iNav Lua. There it is, iNav. And when you see that, just press the jog dial and then you can hit return. Now you can see that I've got three pages set up. I've got page one, page two, and page three. Page three and two are both iNav Lua. So when I hit return to go back to my main model screen, um, there's my page one screen. I haven't really set up any of the things that I want on that yet for this particular airplane. But when I hit page right, you'll see the Lua script. And when you hit page right again, you see the same Lua script. That's because I have it on page two and three. If I hit page right again, it should bring me back to my main model screen. There it is. Okay, a couple little tidbits I like to show you. When I installed this from the beginning, one of the things I noticed is that sometimes my fuel bar didn't populate and it was after booting up the flight controller. One trick I learned is if you long press the jog dial and you go down to reset and reset flight, that seems to reload the telemetry data back into the script and you should get a full accounting of data when you do that. So that's one trick. The second little nugget I'd like to show you is how to change your unit of measure from metric to imperial. So hit the model button, hit page left to go to your telemetry screen and find the speed sensor. I'm looking for the GPS ground speed. There it is. And I'll press enter on that and I'm going to change the unit to miles per hour. When you do that, it converts to Imperial. I'm going to switch mine back to metric just so you can see it. So I'll press the wheel on this field to get that blinking. I'll slide left on the wheel and then hit return. In order to get the metric value to show up, I had to power cycle the radio. For some reason, the model reset trick didn't work, but a power cycle did. Okay, so that's how you convert from metric to imperial and vice versa. And one last thing I'd like to show you is if you hit the system button and go over to your SD card and go down to scripts and then telemetry and then iNav Lua and execute. When you're running the Lua script directly as a script and not as a widget, there's another set of options you can get to by pressing the system button. And you can see in the system button, I have options to change the battery view, the battery alerts, I can configure the battery voltages that are important to me, I can set the fuel units to percentage or milliamp hours, I can change the capacity and so on. If you make any changes when you're done, you just hit return and those changes should take effect. If they don't, you might have to reset your model or power cycle the radio. And of course you verify operation just by checking your battery voltage. In my case, it says 11.5, which I know is pretty accurate. And I can rock my wings back and forth. And I can also move my compass around and see changes on the compass heading. Yep, there are changes on the compass, so everything looks good. And one other thing I'll point out is this little setting on the side in the case of the TBS crossfire, that's the power setting of the transmitter module. So if I go into my crossfire module and change the power output to 100, I'll see that on the screen as well. Well, there you go. Now you know how to install the iNav telemetry Lua script on your TX16S. Very cool feature functionality. And boy, you talk about wow factor. Show this to your friends at the field. It's a really cool looking feature. And there is an opportunity, if necessary, to fly the plane with this if you had to. I wouldn't say it's desirable, but it would be better than flying it with no resource information at all. Well, I hope you liked the video today. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you know new material is uploaded. Check out my affiliate links in the description. Leave a like, a comment, and that's all I've got for today. Take it easy.